Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another educational video. For those of you guys new here, basically what I do in these videos is I commentate everything I'm thinking about and I'm doing so that you guys can see the consistencies across all my games and apply it for yourself. So we are playing an Emerald Platinum and we are playing against a Singed. Against a Singed player, you want to escort your wave but not directly stand with it. You want to sit back to see if Singed pops his head out. If he pops his head out in the middle of the lane, you can potentially run him down and get his summoners. If he doesn't pop out and we go with a standard laning phase, then you can just destroy him. So right now he's trying to proxy. We get Ghost here and I'll run him down a little bit. And it doesn't seem like he got the wave, so we are fine. So let's continue on. We have a standard laning phase here with half the minions and the Singed looks like he'll have some issues with the wave. And looks like I can run him down here and get him off my wave here. Make sure we get our wave to have a standard laning phase. Perfect. And we will go catch top wave. If he does that again, I should be fine. Because Lilia will be top by then. And he didn't catch a majority of this wave. So I think he's going to lose a lot, even if he goes for the next wave. So we have a very not standard laning phase here, but that is perfectly fine. So right here we're going to go check the wave a little bit, he's not going to match it, so we are going to simply go back and now we are perfectly fine. So right there we got Ghost, big summoner spell advantage. And now we are building the wave to crash back towards Singed and he won't play League of Legends. The biggest thing I have to watch out for right now is the Poppy gank, because Poppy is finishing her top side right now, similar to my Lilia. And she can potentially gank my lane after. But let's continue just last hitting, building up the waves. We're going to wait for the next wave. And then we are going to crash the wave. And I'm going to take this opportunity right here to quickly ward. Actually, no, we won't ward. We're fine. So we're simply just going to keep last hitting. Oh, okay. And where is Singed? He is still missing. Okay, there he is, soaking up EXP. So now I'm going to take the opportunity to ward. Ward has been placed, and now let's get some poke onto the Singed while he attempts to farm underneath this turret. And he's running up. I'll sack the minions and get poke on him. I think it's pretty worth it here. Because now Poppy can't gank my lane because Singed essentially does not exist as a champion because he's so low HP. We're going to crash the wave here and look to poke him and potentially dive him on this wave. Perfect. He can't touch any of these. Poppy is coming, that's fine. I'll match the Poppy right away. And I will simply kite backwards, pop my potion, and I'm gonna turn on this Poppy eventually. Oof, mistakes on my part, but that is okay. I should have flashed the Poppy Q so I don't take damage, and then I should have been fine. But that is a massive blunder. Or not a massive blunder, it's a trade. Uh, we're still fine, but I could have played that a lot better. I believe all I have to do again, uh, as I said earlier, is just to simply flash the poppy Q so you don't tank the damage, and then you're perfectly fine. Or you can flash after the poppy flashes so that the E doesn't push you into Singed, allowing the Singe to flip you. A lot of different ways you could have played that. Any way could have been fine except the way I did it. So we're going to catch the wave now. Let's catch the wave. We have to prepare the backline because we don't have the AD to one-shot them. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build up a two-wave crash towards the Singed and poke him hit underneath his turret. I think in this game, I'm going to get ganked very often and I'm going to be put into scenarios where I do have to outplay the Poppy. And the biggest thing will be condemning the Poppy when she tries to E me. Or just pushing the Singed away and tanking the Poppy E. So we'll see when the time comes, but each scenario will be different. But the biggest thing I need to watch out for is make sure I don't get randomly singed W'd and then flung into turret. That's one of the worst things that can happen. So right now we all saw Poppy enter topside, so I'm bound to get ganked here. Really oh, she's invading Lilia. Okay. If Singe walks up here, you obviously poke him, but he is not going to walk up. But going into the next gank, if it does come, Poppy should die here. I will be level 6, so I do have a lot of massive outplay potential. I'm fine here. 
tanked the tower shot. It hurt a little bit. Should be fine. And now I'll simply pop my potion and then D blade my HP back up. And then Poppy should be entering topside to gank me. The biggest thing I need to do is make sure I poke down the Singed and prepare his HP for when the Poppy gang comes, which is in about 40 seconds. She's gonna do two camps here and then gank me. I'm fine here. Oh wait, not if I do that. Oh, unfortunate. It wasn't 40 seconds. She insta-ganked me from base, I see. Alright. So, I am not fined by those Singedies. <laughs> As I said earlier. Alright, so, ladies and gentlemen, we are inting the Singed matchup as Vange. One of the few matchups I'd expect myself to int into, considering there's a lot of other matchups that you can lose, like Malphite Teemo, Rengar, even Fiora sometimes. But of all the matchups, we're losing the Singed matchup. We're down a plating, and the dark should it's a bit embarrassing, but we do have to continue on the play-by-play -play educational commentary and play out the game, because mistakes do happen. So right now I can't freeze the wave because the next wave is pretty far away and I don't have any refill potions. So I don't think it would be very wise to tank a wave and not be able to sustain it up reliably, the Vamp Scepter, because I have only a Doran's Blade. So Poppy's mid lane, Sin should come top here and I should be able to handle him. Right now we are building up a wave push towards him, we're going to do a two wave non-cannon crash. Basically what that means is you have two waves that are non-cannon and then you crash them while the next wave that is spawning will be a cannon wave. So right now I want the next wave to be positioned around over here. So I can crash the wave underneath his turrets and go from there. So we're going to quickly plop a ward and we'll poke the singed a little bit here. Get some damage. And let's continue pushing the wave. I don't think that was worth it, but that's okay. So let's push here and make sure it doesn't touch any of the minions with autos. And let's watch out for that trade that he keeps doing on me. Let's just hit the tower here, we're fine. One of my biggest pieces of advice against Singe is make sure you tumble as you see his W go down. It's so that the W only stops you from tumbling if it's landed on the ground. If it's still flying in midair, you can still tumble. So that's what I'm going to do the next time I see that happen. And hopefully I'll be able to build distance away from him so he can't push me into his turret again. And then I auto him and then tank tower. <laughs> So, let's continue pushing. He's gonna take a base here, which will allow me to take his tower plates. I wanna put an extra point in Q here, just for more damage on the tower. Normally I'd start maxing W in this scenario, but this is an adaptation to what is happening in front of me. So, level up Q, and we will continue pushing. We have more damage. You can go along the wall if you wanna output your damage a bit faster. So, ton of damage. Let's keep pushing here. And we can grab the plates, hopefully, before Singe comes back and runs us down. This is a prime time for Singe to run us down in this matchup. But if I do base here, I don't think I'll get the plate. So, let's see what I can do here. Alright, plate's been grabbed. I'm gonna poke the Singe without using my tumble. And we're gonna back up here because I think he just popped his ult. We're gonna tumble right when we see the W. And it looks like I just have to kite here. Alright, that's fine. I have my Lilia and my Senna coming to top lane. And hopefully they can get some work done. We'll take a peek on what's going on. Hopefully they can... Yep, that's good. Nope, that's not good. And looks like we'll simply push the wave and we will take our base. We don't want to waste Senna's time, so she may as well get some souls and some EXP. We already got the plating, which is what we wanted, and we're going to take our base and grab some items. Alright, very nice. Let's take a base. Ping that ward for 5 gold. I don't even know why it's being shown, but I'm not complaining. Wait, why is it being shown? 
interesting. Does anyone know why that war is being shown? I'm actually very confused. But regardless, there's no gin traps near it. Regardless, back to the top lane we go. And it appears that our bottom lane is 0-3, but our top side's winning. Jungle is 1-0-1. Mid lane is 101 and I am vain into singed. So no matter how behind I am, I am perfectly fine. So the wave's bouncing back towards us. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna shave the wave and poke the singed off the wave. And our objective is to freeze in front of our turret, like any other matchup, and force them to walk up. So they'll have two options, walk up and get poked, or not walk up and lose a CS. But it's very important that you ping to your team that they are missing an action. Because it's very common here for the singe to run mid straight up so we're freezing i'm gonna hold my ward and not ward here because i have a feeling there might be a fight going towards the bushes very soon i'm gonna shave the wave a little bit here so even if he walks up it won't push as hard there's a poppy behind me which is fine i'll eat here and now we will simply fight oh, they baited my ult very nice good job i'll continue holding the freeze and force them to walk up in the dark, and we are perfectly fine. Leave. We're gonna ward the bush very discreetly. And then now Singed again has two options walk up and get poked, potentially ran down, or lose gold. Pick your poison. Just the advantage of the vein top lane. Appears to be a poppy inside the Herald pit. And I'm going to rotate, half rotate towards my team while also still pulling the freeze. And make sure that Singe doesn't just walk up to the wave randomly and start clearing it. Because right there, he probably expected me to go to Herald, but in reality, I just pulled the wave. I was only half moving towards Herald, if in case there was a fight, and now there appears to be one, which is not a favorable one. Yep, that's good, that's good, that's good. Yep, 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 yep. Level up my W midair. The pin with the E, beautiful. And back to top lane we go. And I'm gonna break this while I'm here since it's advantageous for the enemy team. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to shave the wave and make sure the wave is still pushing towards me. Cause I don't think I have time to shove out the wave all the way and base. So we're gonna shove here, shove, shove, shove. And I'm gonna kill one more. I'll base right here. And I believe that will freeze towards us, hopefully. No, it will not. I, didn't, I should have killed one Romelia minion. That's okay, it is what it is. Let's grab our items. Again, the most boring build. But the most meta build, Blade of the Rune King. Rageblade into Wit's End. Sometimes I may do some troll builds just to mess around with things. But this is not one of those games because we're not really stomping. And Blade of the Rune King is really good into Singed and Poppy. Because Singed likes to run around. If you steal his movement speed, he cannot really do much. But the Rune King is also good for Poppy because once you steal her movement speed, because you can't tumble around her, you can create space away from her. So right here, I'm going to take this opportunity to ward. Hopefully no one's in here. Notice how when I approach bushes, I'll tend to like do some really weird juke to potentially dodge something that might be there. Who knows? So we're going to push the wave here. And I'm not afraid of anyone ganking me. So if Poppy wants to gank me, Syndra wants to come, I'll, that's fine. Very good, we perfectly turned. No way. Oh, no way, I had to burn it. So right here, I'm not going to level any points in my abilities at all. Because I want to see if I get into a scenario, which I probably won't, where I need to level my W or Q to beat someone 1v1. And I'm not in a rush to take this turret, because I know I can get this no matter what, even if I don't skill any points in Q. So I'll just take it anyways and hold my point in my ultimate. While there appears to be a fight here. So if they rotate top, I'll probably level up my Q. But if they don't rotate top and let me push, I'll level up my ultimate. So let's take a base here and level up our ultimate once we complete the base. For now, we'll purchase our items towards our Rage Blade. Rage Blade. 
and not a fan of blue trinket for vein top. I do prefer that yellow trinket, but that's just me. However, for vein 80 carry, you should be going blue trinket at level 9 every single time. Since you will be centralized at the map, in the middle of the map, and you can blue trinket to check important areas while you are face checking. Uh-oh. I should back up here. Looks like we can do Herald here. I don't see a reason why not. Seems fine to me. I just need my teammates here. And someone's TPing what? The Syndra's TPing what? So she's not even here. So as long as we don't get this stolen by a Lux ultimate, we should be perfectly fine. Alright. I want to head top lane here. I think they're perfectly fine. And let's catch the wave. We don't want to be running around with our heads cut off with no direction in the game. The structure of mid game, ladies and gentlemen, is very simple when you're winning the game. Push out waves, and then you either continue to pressure or you rotate towards your teammate to make a play. However, it's very important, ladies and gentlemen, that when you push out the wave, you are not putting yourself at a numbers disadvantageous situation. So this is a numbers disadvantageous situation. But my teammates are creating a play out of it because I'm pulling us up on top. Because it's very common that a lot of people would type to their team, Hey guys, they sent 5 people bot lane or top lane. Why aren't you guys doing anything? The person who ever types that is always incorrect 1 million percent of the time. Because you need to wait for your teammates to be in a position to pressure, then you can get caught by five people. So that comes down to macro gameplay, something you can receive in my coaching if you decide to get personal one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. But for now, just to keep it simple, you have to just watch out for it and not get caught 1v4. Be mindful of where the enemy is. So right now, I know four people is collapsing on me. Syndra, Poppy, and... I believe Lux is also uh, collapsing on me too. Yeah, they rotated mid first. But the reason why I'm okay with it, right, is because I'm going to outplay it. So, you simply outplay the 1v2, and then you can go on from there and push the wave. But in that scenario, maybe in a higher elo game, I might back off just so I don't put myself into the scenario where I have to outplay my opponents. Because you don't want to force yourself into those scenarios if you don't have to. But sometimes in lower elo, you can maybe take a little bit more risk and go for those fancy plays, try to get those YouTube clips and go from there. But I will say this, whenever I'm streaming on Twitch, I will 100, 1 million percent always goes for those plays. Those plays don't make sense because, again, your teammates are not in a position to pressure while you are dying. So you have to be very mindful. If you see your teammates are hovering around an objective like an Elder Dragon or a Baron, or they're taking a ton of towers, and you see four people collapsing for you and you can't escape, then sure, go for the 1v4. But right there, we didn't really achieve anything by killing those two people. But we are perfectly fine. Again, we are opposite side objective, everyone's setting up for Dragon. In a higher elo game, I'd probably rotate straight to the dragon, but in this game, I feel like it's a lot more slow paced. I can simply push top. I'm not going to get punished by the enemy team force and fast engaging on my team. So I can create pressure and put the enemy team into a position where, hey, do we deal with Saskio or do we deal with the dragon, right? It seems like they're sending Singe to deal with me, but he can't really deal with me. So, oh, no, he, they, they sent Singe ADC. Well, anyway. So then that means I get free top lane. So we'll continue pushing here, my teammates will die. They may ping you, it is what it is. Continue pushing and just ignore the pings. So, Sindra is now dead. I'm gonna push this tower, and then when the entire enemy team base, I'll probably try to kill them all. Wait, what? I'm so sad. I didn't have anything else. 
but it is what it is. We do end up dying, but we take three with us. Hopefully that puts my team into a position to not necessarily do Baron, but to put them in a position where they can ward for Baron. So let's see if they ward for Baron. Senna, the dragon is down. You want to place your wards topside. Very nice. And if, oh, no, 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 no. You don't want to ward the bot side. You want to ward the top side. I see. Okay. Looks like we have full vision bot side going into the only objective that is available on the map right now, which is Baron. I'm very confused with where I'm supposed to go because Jin is balling, which is not a good lane assignment for him to be balling because he needs to be on the side where the objective is. I am awkwardly wondering right now if I should head bot lane or top lane because I am a huge hater of going to the side where the objective is on. I don't want to be in top lane right now. I want to be in bot lane. So what I'm going to do in this scenario is I'm going to go push mid. Nope, there's a play right here. Let's go follow up. Poppy's dead. And now let's push mid and then grab Baron. So let's rotate over to Baron. Their Poppy is dead. In theory, my jungler will not get a stolen by Lux ultimate, Ash ultimate, Syndra QE, you name it. Because they don't have smite. They only have base abilities. Along with their ultimates. So now that the top Baron is gone, there is really no objective. The next technical objective people are playing for is the Dragon in 3 minutes. So now we'll play top side, which is opposite side map. But now, you have to be careful in these scenarios when you're pushing side lane. The enemy team can fast rotate onto you because there's no objective. You're pressuring while there's no objective. So again, you either go for that ego play, which I explained earlier, where you ego for no reason. Or you back off and wait for your teammates to pressure and Put the enemy team into a position where they have to deal with your team that has a turret or deal with you. So right now, if I walked up, I'd probably die to four people, right? Because no one is showing on the map. Bot lane, no one is showing. Mid lane, two is showing. Ash, Lux, and Poppy. But we don't know where Syndra is, so I'd be put into a 1v2 in top lane. Which is not really great. It's Syndra, Syndra Singed, but it's still playable if I really want to. I do need my teammates to leave this lane though and start pressuring mid. I am very tanky, I can just tank it all. Alright, I should have attacked these. I think she's dead. Okay, very nice. I played that very poorly against the Syndra, but it is what it is. But since the entire enemy team is dead, we can now simply push for free. My biggest piece of advice when it comes to a Poppy engaging onto you is if she's walking onto you and you know she has the full intent to EU you immediately, you want to wind up your Condemn right when she gets in range, so that right when she winds up her E, you can cancel it. This happened, I believe, twice this game. Alright, kill the Ash. Singe is gone. Oh, we are now gone, unfortunately. But, looks like the game will be over. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys drop a like, hit the sub button, and have a fantastic rest of your day.